Hello and welcome to this month's webinar from the IEA Clean Coal Centre. My name is Debo Adams and I'm Communications Manager here. Our webinars are based on our technical reports which are available from our website. Residents of member countries and employees of sponsoring organisations can download our reports at no charge after a one-off registration. Please visit our website for details. Today's webinar is on the status of advanced ultra-supercritical pulverised coal technology and is presented by my colleague Carl Nicol. Carl's report on this subject should be available on the website in November. If you have any questions during the presentation to ask Kyle, please use the Ask a Question box at the top of your screen. Add your email address as well so that Kyle can give you a fuller answer if we run out of time. Okay, Kyle, over to you. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Kyle Nicol, and I'll now review the status of advanced ultra supercritical pulverised coal technology also known as 700 degrees Celsius technology, which is quite literally the hottest topic in coal power. This webinar is split into three parts. The first part will give an introduction. The second part will review the developments achieved in this topic through collaborative research programs, and then I will conclude. Increasing the electrical efficiency of a pulverized coal-fired power plant guarantees lower coal consumption and lower emissions. One of the most effective ways to increase the efficiency is to increase the steam temperature in the steam cycle. The next target is advanced ultra-supercritical steam parameters reaching 700 degrees Celsius and 50% electrical efficiency. However, the maximum steam temperature is limited by materials that can operate in in high temperature conditions for practical service lifetimes without failure. Historically, steam temperatures have been increased to superheat steam temperatures of 600 degrees Celsius through improving steels. But further improvement has been insignificant and the steel bar barrier has been reached. Fortunately, nickel alloys can be used in place of steels in the highest temperature components to reach higher steam temperatures. Although components manufactured from nickel alloys are 5 to 43 times more expensive than using steel, it is estimated that with superheated steam temperatures of 700 degrees Celsius, the use of nickel alloys becomes economically favourable. Coal-fired power plants consist of many high temperature components that range in shape and size from thin section superheated tubes to thick section valve bodies. Manufacturing high temperature components is a complex process which consists of many stages to acquire the desired component properties. Parent materials are fabricated into shape via specific fabrication processes, heat treated and then machined. These parent materials are then welded together with filler materials. Specific welding procedures and filler materials are required depending on the parent material and dimension of the weld. Additionally, post-weld heat treatment may also be required. High temperature components have to withstand a combination of chemical attack and stress for up to 40 years in service. Fireside corrosion and steamside oxidation slowly degrade the materials. Constant stress caused by high pressure and physical load result in creep damage. Cyclic stresses caused by cyclic operation cause fatigue damage. For example, superheaters have to withstand fireside corrosion, steamside oxidation, high constant and cyclic stress. Superheaters are usually the first high temperature component to fail, whereas the steam turbine casing is mostly exposed to steam side oxidation and high constant stress. For the majority of components, the welds are often the weakest link.
Component properties depend on the material microstructure, which is a result of multiple variables in the manufacturing process. As a result, there are many materials available. Therefore, finding new materials for a range of components in a power station requires a research program lasting over a decade at, at a substantial cost with high technical risk. In order to expedite AUSE technology, a consortium of companies have to combine their individual strengths and resources. Additionally, Financial support from government bodies is required to mitigate the financial risk and encourage such programs. AUSC material research programs made from a consortium of energy utilities, component manufacturers and research establishments ex exist in the EU, USA, Japan, China, India and Russia. Generally, these programs consist of three main stages, which can overlap each other by a few years, depending on technical and financial readiness. The process starts off with small-scale laboratory tests to screen materials. Chemical tests include resistance to steam side oxidation and fire side corrosion. Mechanical tests include tensile, hardness, toughness and fatigue. Long-term creep rupture tests take 11 and a half years. Stage 2 manufactures large-scale components from candidate materials, which demonstrates manufacturing techniques, and then tests them in a components test facility, which uses a slipstream from an operational power plant. After three to five years operation, the components are removed and thoroughly investigated. Provided the large-scale components operate successfully and without signs of failure, then these materials component designs and manufacturing techniques can be used to build a full-scale demonstration plant. This demonstration plant will be operated for roughly five years to verify performance, after which the high temperature components are removed and evaluated to qualify the materials. Provided all goes well, AOSC technology will have proven technically viable. This process of gradually scaling up components is designed to minimise risk and the planned time from start to finish of the materials research programmes range from 17 to 29 years. This slide shows a Gantt chart of the numerous European material research projects from 1998 to 2013, accurate to 2013 with plans to 2026. Projects in the same colour are part of the same programme or research topic. The Europeans started the first material research program for AUSC, techno AUSC technology in 1998 called the Advanced 700 program. AD 700 involved 40 participants and had financial support from a few governments and the European Commission. The AD 700 program completed laboratory tests and operated a large-scale component test facility called Comptas 700, which tested boiler components and valves. After four years of operating Comptas 700 and subsequent evaluation, cracks were found in thick section valve bodies and pipes. During Comptas 700, a pre-engineering study was completed for a full-scale demonstration plant in Germany, which became known as Eon 50+. However, this was postponed in 2010 for technical reasons found in Comptas 700. The AD700 programme has not run out of steam and commenced from 2011 as Comptas Plus with, with the HWT2 project in Germany and NCO project in Italy. There is also the next-gen Power and Mac Plus projects across Europe and smaller German projects which aim to complete component testing by 2017. This table shows the candidate materials for the European programme. Nickel Alloy 617 plays a major role.
This slide shows a Gantt chart of the US Materials Research Program, which started in 2001 with 10 participants. The American program is aiming for higher steam temperatures than other programs with up to 730 degrees Celsius superheat and 760 degrees Celsius reheat steam temperatures under air-fired and oxygen-fired conditions. The program will finish laboratory testing in 2015. Some component testing in existing boilers has been completed, which has led to the code approval of InCanal 740 for use in boiler components. Preliminary, preliminary designs for demonstration plant with a list of candidate materials has been completed. The program is now preparing for a, a large-scale component test facility. Again, Nickel Alloy 617 is popular, along with Nickel Alloy 740. Officially, the Japanese program started in August 2008. However, research in this area started earlier. The program has 12 participants and is preparing for large-scale component testing, where superheaters, pipes, safety valves, and a turbine bypass valve will be tested. Additionally, three large rotors will be tested at actual speed and temperature in a rotor test rig. The Japanese program has developed three new materials, Phoenix 700, USC 141, and USC 800. This slide shows a flow diagram developed in Japan, in, in the Japanese program, of a double reheat AUSC power plant with nickel alloys highlighted in pink and green. The Chinese program started three years ago and has 19 participants. Despite the recent start, a large-scale component test facility should have just started operation. A list of candidate materials exists for the boiler, favouring grade 91 and 92, and some materials developed in China. There are material research programmes in Russia and India, but information is scarce. The Russian programme is assessing numerous deals and has plans for a large-scale components test facility. The Indian programme started in 2008 and is preparing for large-scale component testing. The material research programs have produced valuable research spin-off technologies applicable to most coal power plants. Alternative power plant configurations shorten the steam pipework which lowers the capital cost of new builds. Advanced steam cycles include the European master cycle which improves the thermal efficiency of all steam cycles and the American topping cycle which raises the temperature of USE plants by adding an extra topping turbine. New steels are also being developed and are expected to raise the steel barrier up to 650 degrees Celsius. These steels will also increase the flexibility of USC technology by having thinner components which are less sensitive to thermal damage, fatigue damage even. This table summarises the research topics in these programmes. Japan is proposing to retrofit AUSC technology to older plant. Cyclic operation is assessed in the EU and USA. One of the biggest differences between the programmes is with the fireside corrosion test, which vary with the type of coal fired and the possibility of co-firing biomass or waste. Coatings are being assessed in, mo coatings are being assessed in most programmes, but with no tangible benefits to date. New steels are under investigation in all parts of the world, with some promising candidates. New nickel alloys and nickel iron alloys have been developed in Asia specifically for AUSC technology. All programmes assess welding nickel alloys to ferritic steels to manufacture the steam turbine rotor in order to reduce capital costs.
All programs have largely completed laboratory testing and are in the process of building or operating a large-scale component test facility. The Indian program has plans to start op operating a full-scale demonstration plant in 2018. For the other programs, results from the component test facilities and long-term creep tests due by 2018 will provide enough technical data to decide progression to the next stage. If all goes to plan, then a full-scale demonstration plant will be built and operation is planned to start in 2021. Five years of operation would then be needed to verify performance and a further year to evaluate the materials. Results would be ready for the year 2027. This table summarises details of the demonstration plant and possible commercial plant. Providing a full-scale demonstration unit works, then a following commercial scale unit is likely to be of a similar size, as scaling up the technology is risky. The efficiency of a commercial unit will also will depend mostly on the site location, which decides the amount of cooling available, and the number of reheats in the steam cycle. Collaboration bet between the programmes could hasten progress through knowledge sharing and increased finances. A good example is a common material database to prevent doubling up on tests. The programme in Russia and China are open for international collaboration. One of the purposes of this report is to help initiate such collabor collaboration. Increasing superheated steam temperature will continue to provide gains in electrical efficiency. However, this trend will diminish at 900 degrees Celsius, as this is where the carnitization gap begins to close, potentially reaching efficient electrical efficiencies of 65%. Therefore, AUSC technology would be the first of a few more generations of higher steam parameters that utilize superalloys such as nickel alloys and potentially cobalt alloys. Research globally is proving that AUSC technology is technically viable and is estimated to reach electrical efficiencies of around 50%. Providing the material research programs proceed as planned and the time frame for a new build is four years, then a commercially operating unit could be brought online in 18 years. However, the planned economics will decide whether this technology is a pipe dream. The next Clean Coal Centre webinar will take place on Wednesday the 13th of November where Paul Baruya will be the presenter and his subject is Coal Prospects in Southern Africa. I would appreciate it if you could rate this webinar at the top of your screen and I will now answer any questions. Thank you very much Carl for an interesting presentation. Okay, we'll now see what questions have come in. So the first one, Kyle, which country do you think will be the first to operate a full-scale demonstration unit? To cut a long story short, I think Japan and China will develop the technology at roughly the same time. Thank you. And another one has come in. Um, do you think these new materials could be used in other applications? Uh, I don't see why not. The, the pipe work valves and steam turbine, uh, the materials developed there should be able to be used in all power generation systems that use the steam cycle. And the boiler materials are applicable to heat recovery steam generators in combined cycle gas turbines and potentially in circulating fluidized bed boilers. Okay, there's one more question. Before I ask it, can I remind listeners, if you're submitting a question, please add your email details in case um, Carl needs to get back to you. So this last question at the moment, Carl, is this. Do you have a feel for the ideal coal type or qualities 
that should be fired to minimise corrosion and maximise station availability and efficiency? I would say a low sulphur bituminous coal. Um, my report looks a little bit more into the types of coal fired, but this varies globally. Um, a lot of this information is, uh, is confidential because uh, the different materials are produced depending on what coal is fired. Coal is fired. Thank you, Carl. Those have been very useful answers. Okay, there's no more questions come in at the moment, uh, so we'll finish up on, on the questions for now. Um, I'd like to thank you all for listening. Don't forget Paul Baruya's webinar on Wednesday, 13th of November. Thank you. Bye-bye.